going on, my PT peeps, my fighters, and my from fans? I'm One Eye Bry, also known as PT. Don't know if I'm waking or blinking, but I'm definitely thinking about from season two, episode four. And I'm asking the question, what's next for Sarah? Spoiler warning for all things from. We're going to break down the episode a little bit. I know for a lot of people, it was slower. Too much talking, not much of uh, plot development, story development, and it didn't really progress things very much, but sometimes we get those, and it's what it is. But let's talk about Season 2, Episode 4. It starts with a flashback with Christy and Kenny's family, and uh, you have to remember that Kenny's dad died because you're like, oh, okay, you see Kenny, you see Christy, you see you know, the family come in, and they have to put you know, his father in a secure place because he was trying to open the door. He has dementia, maybe Alzheimer's as a form of dementia. And it's sad because he's a danger to himself and others because he's trying to open the door and he doesn't know. Christy understands that as a medical professional, you should understand about dementia and, you know, just Alzheimer's, old age. And it's a shame Kenny has to deal with that. I feel bad for Kenny. Kenny's a character that he's like, he's going through a lot. He wants to be with Christy, but Christy doesn't want to be with him because of the fiance and all this stuff. And he's got it tough. His mom, his dad, you know, now Sarah's stuff. And the elementary school looks like it's either East or West Falls Elementary High School is what we're guessing is what the sign says, but the lettering is kind of tore up. It's kind of weird. It's elementary and high school. And this building is pretty small. It's not like a giant high school or a giant school, which is like the medical building now. But Boyd comes over to talk to Kenny and we see that Boyd is the one that made Kenny his deputy to watch his six, also to watch her back. That's what that means. But we see the suitcases there for Kenny's dad. And you see the nice moment with Boyd being there for Kenny. And this is where the flashback ends. And then we see present day Kenny running down the road to find somebody. He finds Boyd. I guess he's looking for Boyd. And he knows that Sarah is in the basement. And then we're going to see the Sarah, Boyd, Kenny dialogue and conversations, which is kind of big. I know it's not creatures ripping apart people big, but it's kind of big. Then we see Tabitha just running the water for some reason. And then Julie comes in behind her to talk. And I think every episode so far, maybe except for one, they talk about tea. Hey, I was going to make some tea is what Julie comes and says. So Kenny's mom was going to make tea. Kenny was going to make tea. Now Julie wants to make tea. What's up with the tea, right? Tea time. But Julie is there for Tabitha. And it's a nice moment. Julie was less annoying in this episode. I had to laugh when Jade comes in and he's like, oh, you people live here now. What's going on? Can't you go find your own place? Like Jade is hilarious. Jade is the comic relief, in my opinion. And Ethan and Julie are like, what? Our house fell down. And Jade's like, at least you had one. It's not my fault. You broke it. And like, <laughs> it's just funny. Like Jade's doesn't care. He doesn't give any Fs. Julie's like, okay, hey, let's go see Victor. You want to go see Victor? So they go to Colony House and it's a nice dynamic between Julie and Ethan. And not much happened in the episode, but it kind of did, but it didn't. It's one of those, but I didn't hate the episode by any means. Now we see Sarah is handcuffed to the chair and I don't know. Do I feel bad for Sarah? Do you? How do you feel about Sarah? I mean, you have to feel like she's just doing what these monsters or creatures or whoever is telling her what to do, and she's conflicted, but she's got to pay for what she did, right? She can't be like, okay, yeah, I'm being, uh, you know, controlled. It's not me. Boyd knows the significance of Sarah's connections with this place, so you can't just kill her. And what I think is going to happen, which a lot of people probably think is going to happen, is that Sarah's going to go in the box the monsters or creatures, whatever you want to call them, are not going to rip her apart. And everyone's going to wonder why and how she survived the night. And I think that's what's going to happen. We have a spoiler, potential spoiler coming up about episode six and maybe seven at the end of the video. Make sure you watch it. But Sarah and Boyd talk. So Sarah was teleported from the faraway tree to here in the basement. And then she didn't know what to do. So she stayed here. It kind of would have been better if it was something else happened. But I guess she just came here and Boyd was stuck in the chimney or water well or whatever it was but i had to notice the the blocks the, the basement foundation of the the stone was kind of similar to the stone where boyd was it's not the same area by any means i'm not saying that but it kind of made me think of the stone and the stone and it's probably nothing but i just thought about the, the stone there where he was and the stone basement and then we see the pulpit that a lot of people are calling us i didn't know this was called but in the church the post office box is the pulpit for the church which is kind of cool you know to get resourceful if you've been stuck here i wonder how long people have been here and how many people have been coming and going throughout the years 
how many people have died and this. And, you know, we don't know about the timeline of things. You know, time kind of stands still here. But Kenny is trying to figure out why Boyd wants to save Sarah. And it doesn't make any sense to him because he doesn't know about the worms and the communication and what Sarah's really done. He just sees it as what anybody would. She killed her brother. She wanted to kill Ethan and she wanted to do this which is kind of crazy. You got to comment on the red chair that Kenny is sitting in. It's you know jumping out at me again. So I'll have to see if the red theory connects with this show or not, but I can't wait. Then Boyd kind of doesn't feel well and he see the worms. So is the only person to see the worms in Boyd is Victor and of course Boyd, but we know that he's not feeling well. So is he fighting against the worms? And it's the same thing, the worms with Boyd and the worms with Sarah, we just don't know yet. But did Martin help Boyd with the worms or hurt him? I think it's going to be a good thing. You know, he's not doing well. It's not good right now. But it could turn out to save Boyd. Then we see Julie goes into the colony house with Ethan. And I don't know if Julie has a thing for Algin, but more on that later. We see Fatima, or Fatima, however you want to say it, talks about the wedding. So that'll probably be a big episode coming up. And then Victor is drawing some of the stuff that he saw. So the, the Victor drawings have a lot of people wondering, did he see the future? Does he see things? Does he remember things this way? Is it just his way of, I don't, I don't know. It's just kind of telling, is it stuff that we saw connected? Victor saw all the things that we saw already. And what is this creature he's just drawing? Is it something, is it a big deal? Also the cans of peaches, you know, that's a lot of peaches, man. There's a bike right there and that's all you really can make out. I had to laugh. When Victor and Ethan were talking, it was kind of a funny conversation. Like, Victor is a child. You know, he's a grown man, but he's a child. The way he talks and the way he thinks about things. And it was funny when Ethan was like, I told him not to do it. And Victor's like, well, you should have told him louder. You should have said it louder. And he's like, what else are you going to do, right? I mean, Ethan's a small child. Ed Jade's a grown man. I mean, he just would have done whatever he did anyway. He just would have pushed him out of the way. And Ethan couldn't have stopped him. And, you know, it was a nice little moment. I feel like Ethan's trying to be there for Victor. And it's just one of those things where Victor doesn't communicate. He knows all this stuff. He's been there forever. And we just want to hear what he has to say and explain things and the lunchbox and all the stuff, right? And it's a nice moment when Ethan gives him the markers. You're like, oh, that's a nice little thing. And it's just like a little moment in the episode. And maybe people don't care about it. But I thought it was a nice little thing. I don't know if Julie has a thing for Algin. Got to talk about the barber pole. You know, I don't know what that really means there. But uh, the red and the white and the blue. So does Julie just be nice to Elgin because she's being nice and he's the new guy? Or does she like Elgin? We'll have to see. Now, Boyd is getting treatment. This is called a manual muscle test. That's what Christy is checking his strength to see if he had a stroke or residual weakness or anything like that. Boyd checks out to be okay. And uh, it's annoying when they're looking at the spider bites. Not that. that that's fine. But we see the scratch on his arm. And Christy sees it. And Boyd doesn't want to talk about it. That's one of the most annoying things in shows and movies where you're like, just talk about it. Don't waste six episodes where you could have just talked about the conversation right here that I saw this guy and he scratched my arm and now I'm affected with these worms. Is there anything you can give me? Do we have antibiotics? Do we have that? Or just at least talk about what happened. But no, Boyd doesn't do that probably because he doesn't want to, you know, lose the trust and have people think that he's a weirdo. But he tries to stand up and he's still not ready to stand up. But it turns out to be okay. Kenny talks with his mom in the diner and they always have a lot of food. They always have plenty of stuff going on. So the resources here with the food and the water and electricity, there's something is there to keep them alive because they would run out of food pretty quickly. Kenny doesn't say who the food is actually for, which is for Sarah and not Boyd. And the mom's like, you work too hard. You do this, you do that. You need to uh, take it easy. You need to not go work so hard for this area. And I wonder if there's something to that here. Like you have an endless supply of food. You don't have to worry about taxes. You don't have to worry about electricity. You don't have any bills, but you can't leave. So it, it kind of sucks, right? You don't have your free will to come and go as you please, but you're pretty safe and taken care of if you stay indoors at night and you're safe from the monsters. It's kind of nice, right? But then the people are going through the stuff on the bus, probably from the luggage that, you know, the people that died. Kenny says to his mom, you should get out there. I'm not sure what she's really going to do because people are going to you know, take what they're going to take. But we see Bakta, which is kind of a crazy name. And she's drinking. She's sad. Jade comes in. He's like, isn't there any place I could be alone? God. He's like, oh, you're the bus driver. Yeah, you stay as long as you like. 
It's just fun. Jade, he gives zero Fs. He doesn't care. He's going to say what he's going to say. He's the pretentious douche, but he's funny. But they have their moment, and I kind of feel bad for Bakta. How do you not, right? Because she was going to retire, start her life, her new career, and if she wasn't on that bus during that day, she wouldn't be stuck here. She wouldn't be with these people. And that's got to be a what the type moment. If I wasn't there, I wouldn't be here. Like, man, I should have caught out when I should have done this. I wouldn't be here in this mess. I feel bad for her. Then Tabitha goes to find Jim, but he's not here. And we see the dialogue with Tabitha and Marielle, I believe her name is, right? The uh, fiance of Christy. And they had their conversation at first. I'm like, is she stealing the medications? And then you think about it. How much medication is here? Is it from all the people that have been coming and going over the years? It's, it's got to be expired by now, right? But I'm sure people that were here and they died off had the medication. Because look at all that stuff in there. There's a lot of stuff in the uh, cabinet. And not really much comes of it. You know, she says that Jim's not here. He left. And then we see the dialogue with Jim and Tabitha as the people from the town and I guess the bus and people here go through the luggage that are the people that don't need it anymore. So Jim talks about a simulation and talks about a ride in the amusement park that they used to make and, you know, to simulate this and to do that. And you see the guy with the buzz cut is like animals, vultures going through the stuff. You know, that's people don't care anymore. They're just going to take your stuff. They don't need it. But when Jim talks about the simulation, it's interesting because people are thinking about this being a simulation or a dream. And uh, it would be, you know, an idea to think about. Like, is this real? Like, what are we doing here? Who's controlling this? And the voice on the radio and the house collapse. Like, who is actually pulling the strings here? Who's the puppet master of this, you know, town from Ville? Then we see Boyd goes to his office. And the uh, priest guy is here. But he's not here. And also, you have to think about the chess set that's in front of them. Is that Kenny's dad's? And then also the red pawn, well, the pawn that has the bloody mark on it. See, the clock says 8 o'clock. Not sure if there's something, anything to make with the clock. And, you know, they're talking about the dialogue and this and that. And it's like, how is Boyd seeing this guy? And, I again, I talked about the pawn with the blood on it. Is that symbolic? Foreshadowing? Interesting. Love the symbolism. Jim goes to the colony house and talks with Donna. Gotta love Donna. She's just straightforward, no nonsense, don't mess with her. Donna's talking with Jim, and it's funny, like, what do you thank me for? What are you talking about? Oh, you think that's a good idea? You did this, and then this happened. We can't be doing that stuff. It's not like these people helped us that are pulling the strings. It's like, hey, you figured out the puzzle, here's your prize. It's like, nope, don't do that. We're gonna do this to stop you. It's like, you know, it's a good point, it's great points. But then we see the chaos with the person going in the new guy's stuff. And I wouldn't want people going in my stuff, right? I mean, I would just want to push the guy off and be like, what are you doing? I wouldn't have kicked him and I wouldn't have been so aggressive probably, but who knows? You know, it's frustrating to be here and whatever. But I would be like, yeah, don't go through my stuff. I don't care what you're doing. I understand you have a process here, but don't go through my stuff. I don't care who you are and what it is. And I think Donna said that where she's like, look, I don't care about the stuff, but you will not attack anybody in my house and any one of my people, which is good. Donna's sticking up for her people. Then we see the Sarah Kenny dialogue and it's not much, but it is because Sarah eventually tells Kenny about the door being unlocked and what she did and it's been weighing on her and why she did it and all that stuff. And it sets up what's going to probably happen next to Sarah. She's going to go in the box, and Kenny says that to Boyd. She's going in the box, and I would be I'd be pissed off too. If I saw this person was responsible for killing my loved one, I'm not going to be happy about it, right? So yeah, she's got to pay for what she did. Then we go back to Colony House and the hole in the floor, and Fatima talks with Donna, and Donna's trying to figure out, you know, yeah, we can't do this, and maybe we gotta change some things. And then she's like, maybe we should give him a whole wing. Maybe we should do this. Maybe we should cater this guy. And Donna, again, Donna don't mess around. So she goes into the room, grabs an axe, and is like, boom, you know what you're gonna do? You're gonna get the F out. You don't like what we do here. That's it. I don't care. I don't mess around. And you don't mess with Donna. So you probably shouldn't have put the hole in the wall. You damaged your nice wall there. 
but Donna tells this guy, follow me, and they're gonna figure out where to go, and uh, they move the bus, which you can move the bus, it's got a flat tire, it's not like Donna shot up the engine and it's leaking transmission fluid or something, you can move, you can drive with a flat tire, especially a small little spot, Bakta says I move the bus because people in the diner, you don't wanna keep seeing it, makes sense, so this is this guy's new home, and it's gotta smell terrible in here, right? It's gotta smell like puke, I guess body remnants, blood, you know, just whatever. Because remember, the two old people were killed here, and uh, I, I hope they cleaned up the puke by now. But you see what happened with Smiley and the uh, elderly couple, and something's got to happen with this because this guy and Donna, it was focused on a little much in the episode. They put the talisman up. And I know I made a couple of videos about the talisman, just asking general questions and having a discussion about it, about the talisman here and there. But the talisman is facing the front, not the door that Donna closes, but it's still a little open. So hopefully this guy ends up sealing the door. Like when she pushes the door, it still doesn't close all the way. So hopefully this guy knows how to close the door because I don't care if the talisman's on there or not. Evidently what a lot of people are saying, they're just going to come right in because they're invited in. But it's just the question that I have. There's some stuff that makes sense and stuff that is like questionable in my opinion. But I get it. They explain the talismans from episode one. I went back and watched it. You know, it's on there too. So people need to relax with that. But Donna puts her booty on the door and tries to close it. But if you look at it, it's still cracked open. If you watch the episode. So hopefully he figures out where it is and how to close it and makes it secure. But Boyd is going to try and find Kenny. And then the old lady comes over and talks to Boyd. So a lot of people are wondering, what's up with this old lady? She don't seem right. She seems like a spy. She seems like something weird there. Because after all this happened, she shows up in the bus and she's dancing around in the rain. And then she's like, I didn't want to be on this ticket. I wasn't supposed to be here. She's supposed to go to some horse track or some racetrack. And uh, yeah, so she's just got this vibe. And she's like, yeah, I heard you were you were gone from here. You were out of here for somewhere. So she could have just heard that. A lot of people are making assumptions about this old lady. But we'll have to see what happens with her. But something seems off with her. So then Kenny was told by Sarah that Sarah left the door open. He goes back to where his father was ripped apart by Smiley and the other lady, the monsters, and Boyd, you know, and Kenny have a conversation and they talk. And uh, yeah, it's definitely something that is uh, gonna set up probably next week's episode, I would assume, where Kenny says, she's gotta go in the box. I don't care what you say. He takes his uh, badge off, throws it down, and it's like, you got to watch your own six because I'm done with this. You lied to me. You kept this from me. You know, he doesn't trust them anymore. Once the trust is gone, especially in shows and movies, it's the end of the world. Nope, you're done. I can't do it. I was going to tell you. When were you going to tell him? Like, when was that ever going to come up? Because it would cause these problems. But I think the big thing is that Sarah's going to be put in the box. That's my assumption that because she's going to have to pay what she did. She's going to go with she's going to go willingly. The town's going to be like, yeah, see, you got to do this. And then she somehow survives. Or maybe she gets ripped apart. Who knows, right? Who knows what they want to do? But Boyd picks up the badge as Kenny leaves. And it's kind of sad, but, you know, I would be doing the same thing Kenny did and be pissed for what happened. And that's how the episode ends. Now, I have a potential spoiler. Don't know if it's confirmed or not. We'll have to see. But in episode six of From... This person wrote, I don't know who wrote this, I didn't write this, but I saw this on one of the Facebook groups, so I'm sharing with you, photo credit, info credit to the people there. But I know some people are getting antsy, so I just wanted to put this out there. Episode six answers a big question, a question we've been wanting to know the answer to since season one. It's going to lead to more questions, of course, but it's the biggest answer on the show we've ever seen thus far, and episode seven further explores this answer. So just hold tight. If this one doesn't do it for you, then I guess wait to watch the rest once the season ends, I guess. LOL. So a lot of people are thinking that one of the creatures dies. So I'd be like, Smiley dies. This one dies. That one dies. So can you kill them? Hopefully it's a big answer and a big reveal, and hopefully this is true. But we'll have to wait and see episode six and seven. But thank you guys. We truly appreciate the love and support. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Support the PT channel when you can. But either way, guys, stay safe. And as always, tell them, Daryl. Yeah, we love you guys.